Hello fellow vapers, today I will do the build and wick tutorial in English. I've received several requests from people and I've noticed that a lot of people are having issues wicking their mesh coils. So I'll give you a quick tutorial just on how to build your mesh RTA by Vandy Vapes to make life easier for you. Um, first of all, what I noticed while using this RTA, when you reuse your mesh again, which we're going to do now, we're going to clean the mesh and use it again, just put a new cotton in there. When you reuse your mesh, the vaping experience is better, and the only interpretation to this would be is that the mesh becomes less responsive to the pulse. Anyway, let's not talk anymore, let's dig into it, because... I see a lot of people are having issues building their mesh RTA and most of the feedback actually I received, although my mother tongue, tongue is Arabic, but uh, I noticed that most of my viewers were English or English talking viewers. So, um, and all the questions came through English talking viewers. So I said, uh, why not help, help my fellow vapors out there and do something in English. So I hope you find this video useful. Please subscribe, keep on following. I'll try to always throw in as much English as I could into my videos. Uh, as one of, of one of the viewers pointed out that although it was in Arabic, they could still make out what I was trying to say because I had some English thrown in the middle. So I'll do my best to make sure that both worlds understand and get what I'm trying to say in my video. Anyway, that's enough talking. We've done a lot of talking. Let's dig down and start be delicate with your brushing because the mesh is still much weaker than the normal coils so be careful with that Another way I think to get the, co the, the mesh to be less responsive would be dry burning it before wicking. That's another way around it too, so if you feel that your mesh is too responsive to the pulsing, why not go ahead with a dry burn before wicking? Try it out, because I think it's going to give you the same result that I'm doing right now. But I'm sure this result is even much better because you stressed out the mesh through the wall, the, the, uh, through, through the, the the juice and the junk and the glunk on the on the on the mesh itself. So tiring your mesh or uh, stressing it out makes it less responsive. Or this is what I noticed because I started going with higher wattages to reach the vape experience. I got from the first build. So before I was, my limits were 70 to 80, now my limits can extend to 90 and 95, just below 100. So I think this indicates that the mesh has become less responsive. Some people would think of this as a con, to me actually I noticed that when it's less responsive, the vaping experience itself is much better. So. This is another hint or advice that I could throw into this video is um, what I'm sure of, uh, the used mesh gives a better experience than just the brand new one. Okay, now this is clean. Ready to be wicked. See, it looks almost like a new one. So, and I'm not doing this out of cheapness, by the way, because the mesh, uh, 
the wires actually are, are cheap. They, they, they aren't that costly. But uh, when I know when I rewixed, because actually the, the second time I was lazy to do the cutting and the so I said it looks okay. Let's dry burn it and see how it will go. And then when I tried it out, it gave me a better experience. So I said, well, that's how, that's how I'm gonna vape it as long as my mesh is still working. I'm going to keep on using it and reusing it and reusing it until it dies out. This now is ready to be wicked with the new cotton. And this is where all of you guys have the issue. It's the wicking. You either wick it too much so you get no airflow on dry hits or you wick it too little so you get gargling and liquid all over the place. I'll show you how to go through it, a few tips, and I hope uh, this helps you out because seriously the, the, the mesh arte is, is a good vaping experience. Okay, so the first tip is, this is where your mesh circumference should be, not on the outer edge of the base, no, right in the middle between the center pin and the edge. Because this void is then used for the vape to move up your chimney and into the mouthpiece. This is why some people are getting a very tight draw or tight, tight airflow. Because you haven't got enough space either between the wick and the chamber itself. Okay. Or either between the wick. This is your boundary for the wick actually, your posts. Your posts are your boundary, boundary for wick. If you go any higher, you block the chamber and the chimney. So you get restricted airflow. So your wick ends here. One of the questions I received is why not below? Why not right on the mesh? Right on the mesh, if you do that, it tends to be loose. The fluffiness above the mesh holds it into space and makes sure that all of your mesh is in contact with the cotton stuffed in there. But when you cut it short right at the boundary or the edge of the mesh, it tends to be loose on this part. So when it's loose on this part, you start experiencing dry hits. Because this is getting too hot and it's not getting enough juice or enough cotton contact. So the trick, the whole trick to this RTA is the wicking. The first trick is do not put a lot of mesh in there. You think if you put a lot of mesh in there, the ohms will be higher, so your risks of having dry hits will be less. No, this is not the case. You're not getting dry hits because of high ohm, uh, uh, low ohms or high ohms. You're getting dry hits because there is something wrong. The first thing on your wrong list will be the cotton stuffed in there is not in full contact with all the mesh. So this creates a hot spot which then gives you the dry hit. That's one. Two, you stuff a lot of cotton in there. It's not how much you stuff. I'm a Muji cotton user. Some people don't like it. Some people prefer bacon. Some people prefer the cobra. Some people prefer... There are loads and loads of types of cotton out there that are used for vaping. Me, my preference, because it's a matter of preference from one vapor to another, my preference is the Muji cotton. Some people think it's shit, some people think it's crap. To me, it's perfect. It's where I find my sweet spot with flavor, with wicking, with ease of wicking, with how much I need to put I know where, how to move around it. The, the, I know I am. Uh, for me, it's easier to measure how much uh, to cut to get a proper wick. I find it easier for me to use, and I find it as a better vaping experience. It lasts lo uh, shorter, maybe, maybe true, maybe it lasts shorter. But for me, anyway, I change my wicks very regularly. I, I don't keep them get too old. Some people. Uh, prefer to wick every now and then I'm not this guy I switch flavors a lot so I, and I don't like to mix flavors so every time I switch the flavor I change my wick so anyway I don't use the wick for long 
So to me, this isn't an issue. To some people it is. Anyway, let's dig into the RTA. We're not in what I prefer and what I don't prefer. I'll be using Muji cotton. Okay. To me, I found that the good enough quantity is half of the pad. Or a little towards the two thirds. So if this is the half, we'll take another half centimeter and cut there. Okay. This is how much cotton I usually use or that suits my build or my wick diameter. It's somewhere between a half and two thirds. Okay. We'll throw the small piece. I'm also one of the people who prefers to remove the outer layer and not a lot, just a little of the outer layer because we don't want to lose the volume and the density of the cotton also. Now my next trick in the wick is I'll split it halfway through the middle and by the middle I mean middle of the thickness how thick the cotton is cut halfway through now we've cut it in half I put them on the other side And I do a little overlap, as you can see. So that's all we need for the overlap. Half a centimeter, not more. Why I do that? Because this side of the cotton, which is the inner side. Let's talk some science. Gives a higher capillary force to suck the juice in. I don't know if you got what I mean, but this side is better with sucking the juice into it than the other side. So I split it through the middle, turn them over. Now the second hack or the second trick. I use a toothpick in the middle. This creates a void channel in the center of my wick, which enables the liquid to flow through it uh, through the middle and then it primes or it juices up your cotton from inside to out so now you're getting the juice from both directions out to in through these channels and in to out through the center void channel that we're creating by the toothpick and then we roll it in You might think of it as a big hassle or a fuss. Trust me, it's very simple. No hassle, no fuss whatsoever. That's it, we're good to go. It's that simple. Always make sure that your clamps are clear from the cotton because this also can cause a dry hit.
that's it. We're done. It's as, simp as simple as that. Now slowly, we just tuck our cotton into the base bed. That's it. Just softly tuck it in there. Do not tuck it tightly, softly. Because we want to keep it properly aired to enable proper juice flow into the cotton. And make sure that every teeny tiny bit of the base has cotton in there. Because if you forget any small part, this will be an escape for your liquid which will cause the gargling and the spit back of the hot boiling e-juice. That's it. Now we'll, I like to leave the cotton in the middle. The sorry, the toothpick. I like to leave the toothpick in the middle. And I put it out when I've totally finished everything this is your second wick can keep it aside for now now the other tip since we have this in the middle just give it a wiggle in circular motion to make sure that the void is still maintained in there and now this is where we are going to cut our cotton let me bring it from this angle to make things easier for you see almost flush with the posts. Why almost? Because we will do some tucking in. By the time we're done with the tucking in, it's gonna be flush with both posts. And some cotton touch-ups. This is ready to be primed, but then another tip to excellence your wick, a needle. And you remember that center channel we made in there? Just make sure it's still there, okay it's still there, and then we can create other ones along.
as you see our cotton is flushed out with the posts this is ready to be primed and vaped one more tip you see those juice channels in there just get your needle in there and give a little lift up this will enable the juice to go in and under the wick not just hit the wick from the side down a little lift up down a little lift up down a little lift up that's it now we are good to go and ready to vape it and our last tip in the back corner of the base you'll find a void just one of those hairs that we cut off and stuff it in there to make sure that you do not get any liquid flowing through this part and cause an overflow of liquid and gargle or spit back it does nothing so the piece of cotton we added in there again just a small hair bowl like this and we stuff it in here this doesn't participate by any means in the vaping experience it just prevents the overflow of liquid <coughs> through the lower channels into the back causing spit back and gargle during vaping that's it, it does nothing at all to the wick or to the mesh or to the vaping experience by any means now we're ready to go and really enjoy a very lovely vaping experience I hope I was helpful I hope I reached out to everyone out there thanks everyone for the feedback you left on my video and the comments and the questions and thanks for everyone there who said uh, who cheered me up and said um, I, I do it well I do it better blah 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 all the stuff thanks a lot guys I do promise to help out with uh, my videos and uh, by adding more English into it so just in case uh, you're watching a video, you're, you're having issues with one of the items I'm doing a tutorial on, you can understand what's going on. Thanks again, fellows, and I hope, I really do hope, that I have helped out with your mesh RTA, because it is one hell of an RTA. And I'm sure, once you do it this way, and experience the vaping experience I'm talking about, you're gonna love this RTA. See you soon in another video. Thanks again for all your support.